another riveting night of incredible in-season tournament games. Boy, those guys really care, don't they? Really gave it their all. <laughs> God, it was so painful. Out of six games, we had an 11-point victory, a 13-point victory, and the one we're going to look at today, the creme de la creme of last night's entertainment, a 32-point victory. I wasn't going to even do a podcast this morning. I mean, I don't want to insult people's intelligence. It's redundant. Um, you saw it yourselves. It, it's garbage. But there's some things that I do want to point out because I did make myself watch it. I was recording it on the TNT Overtime app. I uploaded uh, some of those clips to the uh, members only section. Uh, that's not an advertisement. Don't become a member to go watch it. It's not worth it. Um, the TNT Overtime view will only make you despise these players more than you might right now. But I am going to talk about the plus minus a little bit and the load management and concern over LeBron's minutes a little bit. I tried to stick this out. It was really hard to watch. I mean, really hard to watch. The Jazz looked like a high school team, maybe. I mean, I, I counted a point where they couldn't get down the floor without turning the ball over like three times in a row. So let me run down why the plus minus is on my mind and why the LeBron James load management is on my mind. It was 32 to 17 by the end of the first. That's already a 15 point lead that the Lakers have. It was 48 to 35 with five minutes left to go in the second. And at that point, Reeves came in for James. There was a 13 point lead at that point in time. The Lakers managed to increase the lead 51 to 35, despite having a series of turnovers. It, they still increase the lead by three because the lowly Jazz absolutely can't do anything resembling competent basketball. I mean, it was so hard to watch. So now it's a 16 point lead. The Jazz foul. And guess what? Guess what? Before the Lakers score can increase again via the free throws, James gets subbed back in. You need to make a note that the Lakers extended their lead with LeBron on the bench. You need to make a note that before the free throws were shot, they subbed LeBron back in. You can make something of this if you will, or you can ignore it. You can say this is a crazy conspiracy, but ever since it was pointed out to me, and ever since the league made it very clear that they were going to push the narrative of how good the Lakers are with James on the court and how bad they are with him off, I'm at least going to point out the facts. So they're there for you to consider and digest. So James comes back in and he's just standing there because it is free throws. Not that he wouldn't just be standing there anyway, but the Laker lead increases by two with LeBron on the court, despite it having nothing to do with his gameplay. I know that's trivial, but I'm far from finishing with my point. The next two possessions, the Lakers go to the free throw line again. That makes three possessions in a row that the Lakers scoring was thanks to going to the free throw line. Russell, then Prince, then Reeves. Not LeBron, not LeBron. Six more points increase the Laker lead with zero of it having to do with LeBron. And we could talk about all the game stoppages, the never-ending free throws, the never-ending whistles, and how that makes it hard to watch. We could talk about the Laker foul call discrepancy. But there's so much disgusting bullshit going on in the NBA right now, I have to skip past those two topics and just focus on the supposed plus minus and LeBron's supposed need for reduced minutes, the supposed concern to keep him healthy. Anyway, back to the game. The only points the Jazz scored from the 350 mark to the 112 mark was a putback shot by Markinen with LeBron standing right next to him, flat-footed 
and without lifting his arms to even pretend to contest it. My point is the Jazz didn't score in that entire period of time I've been talking about until LeBron came back in. And basically, Markinen scored on him. Despite all that, they have an 18-point lead. Like, was that lead not big enough? I mean, was it so fragile of a lead that you had to risk? You had to risk further injury to LeBron? So a comfortable lead is, of course, LeBron's time to shine. Garbage points, garbage minutes, and he hits a wide-open three. And again, I go back to what I've said before. This looks like a practice where both sides of the scrimmage are told to go 70%. Shine, LeBron. Shine in these incredible moments. Moments later, the Lakers are at the free throw line again. <laughs> I mean, come on. So the half ends with a 21-point lead. And I say to myself, are they really going to play LeBron more despite the 21-point lead and despite the supposed concern for his health. Look, hey, if he feels like playing, fine. Who am I to say not to play? If the coach wants him to play, fine. But don't make us listen to this BS about how concerned everyone is about LeBron's minutes and the absolute desperate need to have him on the court lest the Lakers start sucking without him. Because it's a lie. Am I an asshole? For taking offense to being lied to? You should all be offended. Because it's a lie. Why are you okay with being lied to? Am I just supposed to shut up and take it like everyone else? Like the entire league seems content to take it? Let's go to the third. By 5.30 in the third, the score is 79-56, to a 23-point lead. LeBron is still in. Uh... With 5.03 left, it's 84.59, a 25-point lead. With 4.45 remaining, Reeves comes in for James. By the end of the third, it's 102.75, a 27-point lead, which means that even though it was only an additional two points from the 25-point lead, they increased the lead yet again with LeBron on the bench. I know it's not much, but you can't say the Lakers are worse. We've seen this consistently, that the Lakers are able to increase their lead when LeBron is on the bench. And tonight, it's being done against a team that the Lakers basically didn't need any of their starters. You got to question if there's true concern why LeBron was in at all. Oh, it's the in-season tournament. Yes, high stakes, high stakes. So with that 27-point lead and going into the fourth, I thought, please be dumb enough to put LeBron back in. So it's even more obvious that this is about LeBron getting stats in this in-season tournament while ignoring the fake injury concern story. Well, they didn't. And the final score was 131-99, to a 32-point lead. So they extended the lead even further without LeBron, yet the Lakers are terrible without him. A 32-point victory in an in-season tournament. Riveting. Riveting must-watch television, Adam Silver. Okay, that's it. I am going to... Okay, for the sake of not overloading my channel, I am going to put the plays that bothered me the most just up in the members section and have this podcast out for everybody to listen to. Catch you next time.